It is a crime that sent shockwaves through this city. A 14-year-old girl stabbed to death out front of her own home by two teens embroiled in a sick plot. Tonight, the mother of Stephanie Rangel speaks, uh, speaks with our Avery Haynes in her first ever television interview. Avery. Thank you, Roger. Well, this is Stephanie, just 14 years old, the innocent victim of a crime that was nothing short of monstrous. Her mom, a Toronto police officer, is now using her badge to try to avenge her daughter's death. Jesus loves me, yes I know. That's yes, Stephanie Rengel on the right, goofing around with her friend Emily. So. A grainy video of a girl who will forever be 14 years old. Because the Bible tells me so. Her mom, all these years later, still struggles to put her daughter in the past tense. <sighs> Stephanie's just a, or was a, um, like a true humanitarian. Well, she's very outgoing and, and very confident. New Year's Day 2008, Stephanie is lured out of her home, stabbed six times with this knife, and then left to bleed to death in this snowbank. Does she know who did this? Know who did this yes. Stephanie's final words and gasp for breath captured on a 911 call where she names her own killer. Who did it? 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 Is it, am, I, am I accurate? Yeah. Okay. 15 year old Melissa Tudrovic badgered her 17 year old boyfriend David Bagshaw for months with an evil ultimatum. No sex until the girl she viewed as a rival was dead. I said I want her dead. And I told him that I might break up with him. Despite their young ages, both killers are serving life sentences as adults. In my mind, it would have been easier to handle if there had been a diagnosed mental illness or if there had been sexual abuse in, in one of their backgrounds. Maybe because there was no real reason for it and it scares me that someone could, could be that disturbed. Stephanie should have turned 21 this summer. Her mom is still haunted by the senselessness of her killing. The hardest is not being there when she died and not saying goodbye. How much it must have hurt, physically, how much it must have hurt her. <laughs> the family of six cut down to five. The bloody snowbank, the knife, the confession, the daily media bombardment. Not right now, thank you. And then two life sentences for the killers. Through it all, Patricia, her husband James, and sweet Ian, who was made the eldest child through murder, clung to each other. As a family, we're all very relieved that the trial process has come to an end. Two younger sons were shielded but couldn't be completely protected. One day, the, the little boys were on the school bus and somebody had cut out an article and it was Stephanie on the front page. And one of the kids was like, look, this is your sister, this is your dead sister. And um, that was horribly upsetting for them. Six and a half years have passed. Ian, who braved the cameras as a boy, is now two years into a university degree in social work. Patricia and James have grown their family with the adoption of two little girls from China. I made a promise to myself then that if I ever got out of that dark hole, then that would be something I would do for other people. And this is how she's making good on that promise. Patricia Hung, a Toronto police officer for 14 years, is now part of a new police strategy to help victims of crime. One of her roles involves telling fellow officers what it's like to be on the other side of the badge. My name is Patricia Hung. Every single police officer will have heard your story. How do you hope that helps them? I hope they remember what I've said and they'll be just a little bit more cognizant about um, the needs of the victims. This special unit set up by Deputy Chief Peter Slowly has also just created this public website aimed both at better educating police as well as helping families navigate little known services like financial assistance, help filling in paperwork, counseling. When you're um, suffering trauma, you can't um, figure out how to navigate anything. So the idea is that this simplifies it. 
Patricia Hung hopes that by combining her badge with her own tragedy, she can bring some light to the darkness. I have worked really hard to find meaning in, in her death and to make changes. Now, Patricia Hung is also a grief counselor. She also writes a very moving, compelling, uh, inspirational blog. We'll have a link to that on our website, citynews.ca. And you can connect with me about this or any other story on Twitter. I am at City Avery.